right. So hopefully I should be live here and everything should be working. How's everybody doing? Just uh, waiting here for my son to come in. Um, so, great. Right, come on in here. Let me know. All right. Today we are going to be talking about a subject that's very much needed, uh, whether you're on grid or off grid, and um, that is the issue of a toilet. Uh, what do you do for taking care of uh, elimination of waste? Okay. Um, and again, like I said yesterday, if you were tuning in yesterday, uh, this is a big one where people will say, I don't want to move off grid because I can't stand going in an outhouse. Well, um, you don't have to. Uh, you can. There's some good points to an outhouse, which we will discuss today. But uh, again, I have um, experience in all the different things I'm going to, well, I shouldn't say all of the different things I'm going to be going over because there's a few alternatives to the regular flush toilet that I have not tried, but I have tried a lot of them. Um, so here we have some flush toilets. I had to use as my user picture this one here. Um, it says solid gold toilet. <laughs> so <laughs> Winston Churchill's family palace or whatever else, a solid gold toilet. Uh, that's called a uh, ridiculous expenditure of money right there if I've ever heard of one. Um, just insane. Uh, can't even fathom that. Okay. I have seen off-grid places that actually have put in flush toilets. I've known of some. There was one actually, uh, some people we knew, and they had a flush toilet in a little, they had a little bathroom house thing. They had a flush toilet, and in order to use it, you had to fill the, the tank part up here in the back. You had to fill that up with, you know, water, and then you could go in the thing, and then you could flush it. And there was no way to refill it. You just had to go and refill the thing with, you know, little jugs of water. And I kind of thought it doesn't really make much sense to do that. And it takes about two, anywhere from two to three gallons of water in that thing to flush your toilet. Each time you flush it, you're putting two or three gallons of water down through the system. Well, in an off-grid setup, that's a lot of water to use. Now, if you have a well and you can have it plumbed in and all the other stuff, well, okay, might work out for you. But um, the flush toilet system, all right, you can see, of course, how the whole thing works in there and, and whatever else. And, and um you know, very familiar way. There's there's different ones. There's some variation between them, but this setup right here, this one's not quite the same of, as what I've seen. The old flapper type right here, like this one, um, where you have this little flapper thing here, and the water comes up in here and it floats, and then it shuts this whole thing off, and the flapper goes shut after it's done. It, it comes up when you flush. It's connected to this little thing, the handle. You push down on that. And the little thing comes up and all the water drains out. And then it flops back down again after the water goes down to a certain level. This little thing pushes down on it and, and shuts it off. Problem is, sometimes they can uh, stick. The uh, place, one place I uh, used to be at there, they actually had, it was very high, like um, rust content in the water. And so everything would get really covered with a lot of, you know, red rust and everything and, and iron deposits in the water. And it, you know, things wouldn't move properly. So this little flapper thing down in here would actually stick up sometimes if you weren't careful and you'd leave the room and you'd go someplace sometimes and it would just stay open and it wouldn't go shut. And so the water would just keep running in and running in and running in. And the one time I was gone for a couple hours and came back and the thing had been running the whole time. So how many gallons of water were wasted that time? I have no idea. But it's mechanical. Again, anything, when you go simple, right, um, you introduce mechanical things to it, levers and this and that and all this other stuff, it's all things that can fail, all things that can go wrong. 
Usually they last for a long time and you don't have a problem, but they can fail and then you have a major issue. All right. So um, far from be being all that great. And the other problem, the big problem with the flush toilet system is all these different things of septic tanks and drainage fields and all the other things. And you need the groundwater well, um, which is down in here, the aquifer. And then it comes up through the well. You have an electric pump that comes in, hooked up to your fuse panel and everything. You go in, there's a pressure tank. I mean, um, uh, that goes up, it runs the water up into the toilet. You have all the components within the toilet. And then you have the plumbing coming out of it, going into the septic tank right here, and then it goes out into the sewage drainage field. So you're looking at uh, the well, that's one, water pump, that's two, the fuse box, that's three, inside there, pressure tank inside here, that's four items, the plumbing going up to the toilet, that's five, the toilet itself is six, all right, uh, the plumbing leaving the toilet, that's seven, and then you have the septic tank, that's eight, and the, the drainage field there is nine. Nine things are necessary to have a flush toilet. If you're trying to build something small and off grid that's sustainable and whatever else, that can run into a lot of money. And I have heard again of stories where people will try to, you know, dig a drainage field and all the other stuff and they run into all kinds of problems. This place here actually. I don't really know the whole story, but I think that they were having problems with the drainage field in the backyard. That's why we have an old backhoe out there that I have no idea if it runs or not. I don't know. I haven't messed with it or anything. It's an old John Deere um, tractor, you know, backhoe, two wheel drive one. And they were digging out the backyard. And I'm assuming it was probably because there was a problem with the septic system. I don't know. We do have town town water here, but there, I don't think that there's town uh, sewage. I think that's private sewage, is is the way it works here. But you know, you buy some remote property somewhere or some land, and you have to put in nine different things to make a flush toilet work. Is it really worth it? How many thousands of dollars are you going to be spending? Are there alternatives? Yes, there is. The good old uh, outhouse. I've used plenty of these in my day. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with the outhouses. Uh, you know, I've been out in outhouses during the winter and, and things. I actually had a friend that had a um, outhouse that uh, his dad worked at a um, Tyson, you know, chicken food manufacturing plant, and they actually had one of the old freezer doors, the old stainless steel freezer doors, and um, and is that album? Give me that album over there. The one big black album on top there. Um, and they actually had a, a freezer door for the door for the outhouse. Let's see if I can find that picture quick. Um, okay. Uh, but it was very secure inside there. We used to always joke and say it was an old single wide trailer was the cabin, and the outhouse door was this. Uh, freezer door thing and yeah there it is Let's see if we can get this picture out of here um we used to always joke and we'd say if there's ever some kind of a crazy bear attack or something like that head to the outhouse would be more secure than the cabin <laughs> so Let's see if i can get this picture out of here i'll tell you what let me let me stop sharing my screen here for just a minute okay now, let me see if I can hold this up there. There's a picture of the outhouse with the freezer door. So, uh, pretty funny. Worked pretty good. Okay, back to that. Um, so, you can get pretty creative with outhouses. I've been in some very interesting ones, to say the least. Um, my older brother and his wife, they had a one built out of logs actually I'm not sure if that picture's in this photo album or not um let me just check here real quickly wasn't really planning on putting this into the video but um 
no, it's not in that one. But uh, there you go. Thank you. Um, but yeah, outhouses. I was in one in, in uh, Honduras. It was just a cement tube coming up out, and you had to sit on top of the thing. And this little tiny wooden box, and out there in the jungle in the middle of the night, I'm thinking scorpions, tarantulas, possible snakes. Not very fun, but um, you know, a lot of the national parks you go to those, they'll have outdoor toilets like that. Basically, they're just outhouses. And um, what's an outhouse? An outhouse is just a hole dug in the ground, sometimes lined with cement, other times just dirt. And uh, don't look at that right now. Don't look at that right now. Um, my son's in here today, so I'm going to be talking a little bit to him. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you can just basically have you can just basically have a you know dirt hole with a wooden thing built on top of it some of these old ones probably that's what it was you know ones that might just be for decoration i don't know but i've seen them in this type of shape almost and you know you go in there and it's just a hole and you just after it's filled up a little ways with waste you just dig it up and you take it out some of them have been pretty smelly pretty bad other ones, they'll, people will put uh, like a ventilation system in. You can kind of see, not that's not a real good picture, but you can see like that one there. You can see that they have that PVC pipe going up through with a little black painted thing up top there. So that gets a lot of the smell out of it. You get them that they're pretty good, that they don't really smell that bad. I've seen that. So, um, but there's a lot of different things that you can do. You go to Alaska. I know a big thing up there is they'll actually use the blue foam insulation instead of a toilet seat because in the wintertime, the blue foam actually retains heat really well. So it's actually warm to sit on it when it's sub-zero outside and you have to go to the bathroom. So outhouses, a uh, flush toilet system, you have nine parts to it. Outhouses, it's one part. And that's it. Um, very simple. Uh, what are the downsides to it? Well, some of what I've already said, but the other, you, know, you have to clean it out and everything or else or just move it. Uh, the other issue with it is um, the legal issue, of course, depending on where you're building, you might run into some trouble there. They might not want you to have outhouses and things on your property. If it's near a water supply or whatever else, that's not so good. It can leach into that. Um, some of the waste there. Um, uh, there's, there's some issues. I mean, it's in terms of Another paranoia that people have is that they'll they think to themselves, well, um, you know, you can have, you know, maybe there'd be a, a snake down in the thing or inside it or mice building inside of it or something like that. Not usually. Usually that's not a problem. Um, it's more just the, the thing with an outhouse is it, it is cold. You know, it's not too much fun to go out in the middle of the night if you have to go really bad. Um, that's why a lot of old timers would actually have a chamber bucket just like a, something that you could go in throughout the night and um, and then during the day you can go out there and dump it out or whatever else that you need to into the outhouse. Um, the other issue is, of course, if it's not sealed perfectly and you have a lot of bugs in the you know spring and summer months, that can get a little bit annoying as well as you're sitting there trying to go to the bathroom and the bugs are getting in. Like I said, if it's not sealed real tight, if there's some cracks in the door or whatever else, the bugs can get in and make it pretty miserable when you're going to the bathroom. Um, so those are things to think about. Are there are are there alternatives to the outhouse? Yes, there is. Um, sawdust toilet. I remember the very first time I heard of a sawdust toilet. There's a good picture of one right there. I thought to myself, I was Countryside Magazine. I was reading it and I read this thing about you know sawdust toilet and i thought huh i was thinking how do you you know i was envisioning a regular flush toilet somehow that uses sawdust that you could somehow flush things with sawdust <laughs> completely clueless as to what it was um the way it works right there well you can see it right here it's just a five gallon bucket down inside of a wooden box with a regular toilet seat on top of it and you go to the bathroom you first put a little bit of sawdust in, you go to the bathroom in it, and then you flush by putting sawdust on top. Um, we have also used um, ash, dry, you know, not hot coals, but ash that comes from the wood stove, we also use that. And that also 
will seal off the smell. Um, you know, put hot coals in there, you'd have a, that'd be a problem. There's another type of toilet we'll discuss here where, you, you know, that would actually be similar to what it does, but we'll get back to that. But um, sawdust toilet, if you use the right type of sawdust, there's no smell. And I don't, I mean, there's no smell. Um, there might be the initial smell from what you would normally do in a regular bathroom that, you know, this is a real fun talk today, but <laughs> yeah, it's part of it. Um, you, you know, once you, once it's in there and the sawdust is on, not a problem. There's no smell. And um, you can go into a place that has a sawdust toilet and you wouldn't even know it's there. And um, we'll talk about how to get rid of the waste here in a minute, but uh, I'm going to discuss sawdust here for just a little bit. Um, there are different types of sawdust. Okay. Uh, I mean, you say, well, sawdust is sawdust, isn't it? Well, not really. There's dry sawdust, there's wood shavings, there's green sawdust, there's stuff that comes from, you know, like you would be using your chainsaw. That's probably one of the better ones, but there's different types of wood there and whatever. Some hardwoods don't really mask the smell as good as others, especially if it's green. Um, other ones, I, I think probably the best one would be, you know, balsam fir, pine, spruce, like that, that comes from cutting with a chainsaw, uh, getting that sawdust or a sawmill or whatever else. Um, I have seen cedar as well. Cedar's pretty good if you get the red cedar. Um, white cedar's fine as well, but there's different types of things like that that are good. Some hardwoods just don't really mask the smell all that great uh, from our experience. And we've been doing the sawdust toilet thing now for probably nine years, I think. So we're, you know, we've tried a lot of different uh, ideas and whatever else. You can get uh, bags, like a tractor supply of dry pine shavings. We have a hardware store in town here. We actually get them from them. Um, just regular pine shavings. It's They're bigger flakes and whatever else. They work pretty good and they definitely will absorb moisture much better. But then sometimes they don't really mask the smell as much if you don't use a decent amount of it. Um, if you use uh, shavings that are too wet, they will work at, at concealing the smell of solids, but liquids, they will not absorb the liquid all that well. And so that's a problem. So, but now on to the uncomfortable question here what do you do when the bucket's full? Okay. Uh, everybody says, oh no, what about that? Well, take it out, put a lid on it. And then take it outside if it's not freezing outside or, or someplace if you have some place where you can keep it in the winter time where it's warm enough that it'll stay okay. Then you put a new bucket in, put new sawdust in, and you wait till that one's full. And you take it out and, and you do that. And then eventually you take it to your compost pile. Then what you do with that is you make sure that you have some dry leaves or whatever else in there and make kind of a you know, take a pitchfork and kind of get it into a area where it's sort of like a nest, if you will, where it kind of goes down in like a crater. And then you can dump your buckets down into that. And then you take some water, put some water in with a little bit of um, soap. You don't want any kind of antibacterial soap because that kind of defeats the purpose of it being in a compost pile. But you clean out just like with a regular toilet brush and you wash it out until the bucket's clean inside. Um, and you know, you say, well, so then the buckets don't ever smell. Well, after a while they start to absorb some smell. It's not a really horrible smell, but you can definitely smell it. And what you want to do with that is store your buckets outside upside down. So all the water, any remaining water drains out of them and they let them air out a little bit and that smell will pretty much be gone. Uh, and, it, and then you bring them in again and you go to use it. You put the sawdust in, you can't smell anything. So I'm, I'm talking a very faint smell here. Um, again, we have a lot of experience with this. So uh, we've been doing this for, for many years. And um, is it fun? No, it's not fun. I, it's one of my most hated jobs on our homestead, um, doing the compost toilet buckets. Oh, when you're done putting the compost out, then you can put some leaf matter over top of it or salt, sawdust over top of it or whatever else. And it will compost down into soil I've seen it in as little as a few months. It'll do it if you have a really good compost pile where you're putting kitchen scraps in and leaves and whatever else. It'll turn into really nice, rich soil. Some people would say, I don't want to use that in my garden. 
we never have done anything like that. We'll just take it and, and use it to fill in ruts or whatever else. And it's, you know, just like regular soil. It's just organic, really good soil. Would I grow food in it? No, I wouldn't. I don't think I would. Um, again, some people say you should wait about three years, let the compost pile really go for a while, but you can get a, a compost thermometer. It's a big, long, kind of like a meat thermometer, but it's longer. And you can put that into the compost pile. And if it's up over 100 degrees, it's going to kill any kind of harmful bacteria. You'll have no problem. And the bugs will get in there and everything else, and they'll take care of it. Worms will get in, earthworms, I'm saying. And uh, they'll get in there, and they'll break it down into regular soil. Works quite well. And you say, oh, that's just disgusting. Oh, it's terrible. What do you think happens to your waste when the septic you know, tank people come and pump it out? You take it to a treatment plant, treat it with a bunch of chemicals, and then put it into the rivers a lot of times. Or go out and spread it on the fields. I literally remember when my wife and I were still in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. We drove, and there was actually a New York City municipal waste um, septic truck out spreading the waste onto the fields where they grow the crops uh, in Lancaster County. I saw it happen, and it was terrible smelling. It was it was this dark brown, almost black coming out the back it was the smell was horrifying it was bad and then they disc it under quick so nobody notices and whatever and make some good money so uh oh i get my produce from the nice farmland and whatever else well there's a good chance that they're using you know raw waste from the cities i saw it i knew about it um they get paid good money for it um so yeah uh with composting it's not nearly that bad of smell. I mean, if you've ever gone to an animal barn or whatever else where you're digging out, you're mucking out the animal building, it's going to smell similar to that. It's waste. You have to do something with it. And if you can compost it, hey, so much the better. It's, uh, it's actually a lot better for the environment. It's a very a good thing to do. Um, a uh, outhouse is good. And you can do kind of the same type of a thing there as well. I've seen people that actually do an outhouse kind of up on a platform. And then it's sort of once it's full, it's like a giant sawdust toilet bucket. You just leave it in place and there you go. And, you know, you could actually have an outhouse on top of a compost bin. So that's another thing to do. Um, again, that there's different things you say. What about me, though? I live in town or someplace. How can I do a sawdust toilet bucket? Well, probably not going to be able to unless you would be able to um, do maybe just one for emergency purposes or something like that. Um, you know, most people are going to have some phobias about you putting your own waste out with sawdust in it into the backyard with your kitchen scraps or something. Um, it does put off a smell at first until it's covered. So that's what we have done for a long time. Um, what about another option? I said about burning. Here's another option. Um, a incineration toilet. Okay, you can actually, I knew of a cabin not far from here that actually had one of these, that you go into the thing for a while, and then after some time, you, you can push an incineration thing and whatever else, and it basically will burn it, and it goes up out of the stove pipe, and out it goes. Uh, I don't have any experience with one of those. No idea how well it works or if it puts off any kind of really weird smells. I can't imagine it would smell overly great coming out of there, but uh, I don't know. Um, another type of composting toilet, you get these bigger ones like the Sun Mar type, and they have, you know, the, um, that goes down into a bigger tank downstairs, and there's all kinds of, um, ventilation systems and you can go down and you add peat moss to it and a bunch of other things and um probably works pretty good i would imagine but they are really expensive you can see a lot of the prices here of these you know over a thousand dollars for a lot of these um toilets some of them you get the entire system like this one right here you're looking at a couple thousand dollars now was is it cheaper than putting in the whole you know um sewage draining system and all the other the nine parts of the toilet flush toilet system is it cheaper well yeah probably this is probably cheaper here 
but you know a five gallon bucket with a, a luggable loo lid you can just luggable i'll just do that real quick here um okay luggable loo lids right there or you can get the whole bucket So you can see it right there. That's what it is. It's just a regular five gallon bucket. You can go to any of the big stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever, tractor supply, places like that. Get plastic five gallon buckets, get a luggable loo lid for the thing, and there you go. Um, so, uh, but that's a whole lot cheaper than something like this. You know, almost two thousand dollars for that one from Cabela's. Again, something to think about. Um, there's, you know, I've known of people that that have outhouses and composting toilets. You can do that. Um, it doesn't all have to be, you know, just all one or the other. You can do that. I mean, we we use um, most types of the of toilets out there in terms of outhouse and sawdust toilets. Uh, we actually took the toilets out of this place because of being hooked up to town water and I don't the un, the plumbing system here I don't know what's going on with it the one pipe in the basement is cracked and falling apart and everything the one sewage drainage pipe and and uh, so we just said okay shutting down that system we're not going to use it I don't know what the case is why they're digging this huge hole in the backyard um, so we don't mess with it uh, so those are the different options. Um, I don't really know of any other options for getting rid of waste. Uh, if anybody has any other options, you can tell me about that. Um, but I think that composting your own waste is a very smart thing to do. Um, like I said, we've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, I could show somebody scientifically that, yeah, let me take you here to where the old piles used to be that have now composted after years of being used and it's right back to very rich organic soil now you can't go and dig it up and all oh, there's toilet paper and whatever it's all gone um and you know of course your kitchen scrap waste too you can put it right in there um one thing i will say that one downside to the thing of um you know composting your kitchen scraps with the sawdust toilet um, type of stuff is sometimes you might have a bear or something like that that gets interested in the kitchen scraps and they might get in and get a little bit messy with the other stuff as they're digging for the kitchen scraps which you know black bears are famous for that they love you know uh, scraps from food and whatnot and um, so you have to be careful with that but um, other than that that pretty much covers it uh, I just think that the toilet the flush toilet is a recent, you know, fairly recent invention. Actually, I watched a documentary on the whole thing of the history of toilets, and they don't really go back that far. The ancient Romans, of course, had their aqueduct system, and they had big public toilets, and you could basically, it was just a hole in a bench, and you went to the bathroom, and there was water running underneath it, and it was smart, and then it went right down into the hole, and the water washed it like that, but then it went out into the ocean eventually out into the rivers and everything else that's a dumb idea and you think wow they were so primitive well um, when i was in honduras the one little town there that we were in there were people that were basically running their waste from their toilet down into the river and then in other parts of the river they're doing laundry and you know just not a good idea um really bad idea so the, the flush toilet thing in off-grid systems to me just does not make sense unless you really love your flush toilets and another thing i will say um sawdust toilets uh they don't overflow okay there's no need for a plunger because things get stuck in there <laughs> okay um that's one of the big advantages if you've ever had to plunge a, a toilet um it's you know it can be pretty bad. I've seen them overflow where they go up over the seat and down onto the floor and the whole deal. Um, so it's not, oh, flush toilets are so much cleaner and whatever. Eh, 
Not necessarily. And, you know, if you are forced to, um, the power goes out or whatever else, and you're trying to go to the bathroom and your toilet and you can't flush it, you, if you have a flush one, I'm saying it can get pretty stinky. So, you know, all of sawdust toilet would be gross. Well, when you compare it to certain things with flush toilets, it's not that bad. And I've seen people too, they're, none of these are really elaborate, but like this one here, you can see has a little hinged, you know, top on it like that. It almost looks like a regular flush toilet, but then you would lift that up and that's where your sawdust would be kept in here. I've seen people do that. It's pretty neat how they do that, but you can really get, you know, some neat, like there's one, you know, more of a really stylish, you know, nice wooden one there. And um, you can really make some nice, you know, flush toilets, use your creativity and whatnot. So, all right, we will go to questions now. Anybody have a question? Um, I see one here I can answer. Question, have you heard of a YouTube video called Ice Age Farmer Channel? I think is what you mean by that. Talks about global food shortages. Yeah, I've seen some of his stuff. He puts out some pretty decent things. I don't know much about him. I can't recommend one way or the other. But yeah, I've, I've seen some of that. And global food shortages, yeah, there's a lot coming with war. Um, it's interesting if you study the book of Revelation. Um, the first rider is the white horse rider released in Revelation chapter 6. And he goes out conquering and to conquer. The second is war, the red horse rider. The third is after war, the third rider is famine. And then after him is the pale horse rider and death and hell are on him. So uh, famine, death and hell follow war. Hmm. Um, if we have a lot of war this year, which looks like that could be happening with the whole Russia, Ukraine thing, um, it's going to lead to a lot of famine. So. It'd be a good thing for people to get familiar with things. I mean, the Luggable Lou thing that I showed earlier, you know, um, that thing right there, the Luggable Lou, they're not that expensive. What, it's $38.50. It's actually gone up. It, they used to be about $20 or something. Um, I mean, you can even get an old, uh, like, if, let's go back to these. You can get an old toilet seat and just, you know, make a wooden box out of plywood or something, put the five-gallon bucket down in it and, you can do it for even cheaper. You know, five gallon buckets aren't expensive. And if the power goes out and you have no other choice, well, there you go. Um, good thing to do. Can you just use regular dry dust soil from outside instead of sawdust? Well, anything basically that would cover the matter and absorb a little bit of moisture, you could probably get away with. We tried leaves the one time, dry leaves. Um, and it didn't really work all that well. Uh, question, Earth, Earth ships solved the flush toilet problem, including the black water. It's been tested for over 29 years. Post a link earlier in chat. Yeah, the Earth ship thing, there's a lot of stuff with them that they come up with, and they can recycle some of the flush toilet system and whatever else, and it goes out and, and acts as a fertilizer and whatever else, which there's some neat stuff too. There's... Um, Question just came into this. Where do you get the sawdust? <laughs> well, if you're cutting firewood, you can use it, you know, from there. There was actually a a uh, remote lake that we go to sometimes, and there's this there was an old sawmill, I guess, there, and they have this gigantic, huge, big pile of sawdust that's still there. And um, so we were getting actually some of our sawdust from there. The problem with that is being a little bit wet because it's out on the ground in a big huge pile. It doesn't really absorb all that great. Um, so you want the, your sawdust to be able to absorb moisture, but yet cover solids is what you want there. But, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you can use other types of things that have those same qualities. Um, they're dry enough to absorb the moisture, but heavy enough that they can cover the waste. In the military, they put plastic bags in the buckets and then throw the waste out with the regular trash. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, that's one thing that you can do. I mean, people throw out the 
you know, baby diapers and whatever else. So technically, I guess if you're in the city and you had to, you could just, you know, line the plastic bucket with a um, bag or something and do your waste in there and might not be that great, but you know, it works. Question, you can incinerate the sawdust waste. Posted video earlier in chat. Actually in Vietnam, during the Vietnam War, a lot of the soldiers, they would actually, um, I can't say the word that they would use, but they would burn the waste and um, they would put kerosene down into the outhouse, down into all the thing there, and then they would burn it. And uh, another thing that you can do to incinerate it. Have you used the biodegradable bags in your bucket at all? No, we haven't. Um, so, is there any insight on Israelite farming tactics? No, I don't really have any of those. You know, there's some stuff in the Old Testament about some of their, you know, animal husbandry but there's not a whole lot that I can think of off the top of my head about actual gardening type practices and things that I can think of. We use pine shavings from feed store and chicken coop, big hill for five bucks. Yeah, you can get them. They're pretty cheap. I mean, it's, it's a big bale of it. I think you, I think you missed the word B there, but you know, it's a big bale of it, you know, maybe what three feet wide maybe 18 by 18 and three feet wide or something, or three feet long, excuse me. Question, what is the bucket made of? Plastic. You can use a just a regular plastic five-gallon bucket. Um, question, would you consider doing videos on Earth ships? I have resources, resources I can share. No, because I don't really have any experience with it. If you if people want to look into the Earth ship thing, there's some really fascinating stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Look it up on YouTube or whatever else. I mean, it's something to look into if people are interested in that. But I just, it's not that I'm against it or anything else. I just, it's not something we have built and I don't have any experience ever being in one. So I can't speak with any authority on it. It's better for other people to experience it. So does anybody else have any other questions? Like again, like I said again, if you you know could just write question before your actual question, that would be good. Oh yeah. Okay. What about toilet paper? I think is what you meant there. Um, yeah, toilet paper. Um, we just use regular toilet paper. If we have, um, you know, we can all, you can also use a paper towel, like a dampened paper towel, um, toilet paper substitute or anything else. I, I don't know. Some people used to actually use an old catalog or an old, you know, paper from a book or whatever else. So. You can use, if you're out in the woods and you have to really go bad, you can use dry leaves. Um, question, can you use sawdust toilet or plain bucket while camping? Yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. Another good thing to do. Does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, I just tried to order the bags for the loo, and the default shipping was to Californication, and they won't allow it. I changed it to Montana. Huh, interesting. Find that interesting that uh, they wouldn't allow 
you know, the bags and things to be sent there to California. It's supposed to be green and all that. Have you seen the Chinese toilets that fall into a pig pen and have them eat up the waste? No, I haven't seen that. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think that would be a good idea. Um, question, how often should you move an outhouse uh, location? Well, that it's pretty much if it would get full and you don't want to clean it out, well, then you'd probably want to move it at that point. Uh, question, saw someone use PC fan to vent out the smell. Well, you probably could do that. It'd be nice and quiet. Um, so, Question, what if you became a Christian when you got too sick to work? Jesus literally brought me to my knees. Now I live in the city by myself. Sometimes it's even hard to leave the house. Well, it's something that you have to get your health in check. Um, you have to start learning how to detox. And, um, you know, I have come from, from a very toxic past. And it's just a matter of, you know, cleaning up your diet, praying, and, you um, Asking the Lord to, to help you get out of that situation and just trusting the Lord and he will get you out of it in his timing. Um, I'll answer that one quick question off topic. Any, but any thoughts about Jason Cooley, old past Baptist church? He used to listen a lot, but not much now. Yeah, he, he got mad at me because I came out with a study called um, uh, the false God of post-trib. Christians or whatever else and, and he called me an idiot and a bunch of other stuff and so I never really bothered with him or anything I heard somebody say the one time that he thinks I hate him or something like that which no I don't hate him I don't really know much about him I don't really follow his you know what he does with his life and whatever else so Any books on how to compost this type of waste properly Properly that you recommend? There's a uh, uh, Joseph Jenkins or Jerry Jenkins or something, the human or hand book. Um, I don't really recommend the guy because he's into some really weird religious belief type of things. But it's really not that difficult. Um, I mean, there's plenty of stuff online. You can look up some things. Plenty of people, you know, did really good detailed videos about how to properly um get rid of your solace toilet, toilet waste. So not very difficult. So let's see here what the next one's about. If anybody else has any other questions, you can go ahead and write them. I'll try to get to them here in a minute. Um, and then we have two more uh, seminar videos to do yet one will be on how to fail at off-grid living that's the next one and then the one after that will be uh, the future of old paths living going even farther than the off-grid um, okay Okay, I'll click on this one, I guess. Off topic also, have you looked into microcurrent stimulation for your eyes? I am using a machine, and so far I'm having success with my diabetic retinopathy. Um, never heard of it. There's a propane version of the incineration toilet could use biogas. Um, yeah. So does anybody else have any other things to add? Or ask or anything else? Did I, did I miss anything? There were some things I did miss there, so. I 
I have an off-topic question too. What do you think will make the world persecute the Jews badly as the years go by? Um, right now, they're building the, a new Nazi movement here in America, the alt-right movement. I'm probably going to be doing a video about that in the future. Um, prophetically speaking, the Jews are going to be pushed out of this country. So um, it will be, they'll probably blame pandemic type of stuff on them or economic type of stuff on them. They're, they're going to blame something big because the, right now they're stoking the flames. People are getting angrier all the time. You can just feel it when you go out in public around people. You can just feel that anger is building. Uh, there's, you know, perilous times shall come, as the Bible says. So, we still have a few minutes here yet, so I guess I can just, if you anybody has any questions, go ahead. Just doesn't have to be about the off-grid thing. I think we've, I think we've covered the topic. No, no pun intended there with the, you know, the covering the topic, you know, like covering it. But, uh, <laughs> um, question, what do you take about Ukraine? Um, the, oops, excuse me there. Um, you know, the, uh, the thing, the whole thing with Ukraine, um, I would say one of the biggest, Probably the two biggest prophecies for the end times in the Bible is would be the rebirth of Israel and the return of the Jews to their land and reestablishing their culture and their language and everything else in preparation for the Lord revealing himself to them, book of Revelation. But then the, the most significant prophecy after that would be the mark of the beast because it's the first time in history that you have something that somebody can take and God will not forgive them when they take it. Um, which is really in, amazing to think about. Uh, and how do you bring the mark of the beast in? You have to destroy the economies of the world. You have to crash the dollar. And, um, you know, I think that that's part of what this whole Ukraine-Russia thing is about. That's going to do a lot of bad things to this nation, to America, and to all other countries. If we go into World War III, uh You know that's going to really do some stuff to the economy so um, question are you aware that Russia controls 70% of the fertilizer they signed an, an agreement with Brazil with uh, Brazil um, no I didn't know that but that's kind of what I'm saying here you know there's a lot that Russia controls and, and has a big hand in and whatever else and you know I think of the other problem is that now that Russia is going after the Ukraine, there's a lot of talk I'm hearing of possibly China now going after Taiwan. And so, um, off topic, but what does Matthew 21 through 16 mean with the man that is in householder and his hired laborers? Um, well, that's, a, that's a bit too big to get into here on this. Uh, going, you know, I can't really spend, we don't have much time left in the live stream here uh, before I need to shut down. That's, <laughs> that's more of a sermon type of a thing there. So. Question, how should a Christian fight in a World War III? Um, well, mostly on your knees, I would say. Um, praying. That's what is going to be most important. Um, I would not join in any kind of a military thing. Uh, at this point in time, um, you have to remember that the elites, there's two things that they're, they're two most important things that all ties together a lot of the conspiracy stuff. Number one, they want to slow down the birth rate. Number two, they want to reduce the population. You look at the Georgia Guidestones, if you want proof of that, you can look into a lot of other things. 
and you know a lot of the conspiracy writings they go back to those two things and um war will take care of both of those as will famine and a bunch of other things too slow down the birth rate and depopulate just remember that so you go into a war and you volunteer for the military or whatever else um they're probably going to be killing off a lot of people uh, sending troops into battles that that don't make any sense and whatever else i mean study the wars of the 20th century in america especially you know that the american soldiers fought in and it, just ridiculous nonsense sending them into battles that they can't win and getting just slaughtering you know a bunch of men and things so don't join the military i've been warning people about that for a while if you're in the military get out of it Question, do you think false Christians are the ones that die in war? Well, I don't know. I can see the argument for that, but, uh, and, uh, I don't know. Did you go to any churches where the men and women face each other and the preacher is not facing either of them? Eastern European Anabaptists do this. And I found that Amish do as well. Yeah, I've never been to any churches like that. The Amish definitely do that. Um, good or a good quote here sister uh, my grandmother once said war is old men talking and young men dying very well put um concerning war what if you are drafted as a christian i heard that a lot of the russian troops in ukraine are drafted um again you just have to pray about that um you know a lot i know a lot of men in the past would have done the conscientious objector thing or whatever else where you, you don't get put into a frontline combat thing or whatever or, you know that it's something that you really um you really have to pray about um because i just think that it's it's going to be a bloodbath if it goes to world war three it's going to be a massive thing of exterminating huge numbers of people so you go into it i think it's probably going to go very bad you know and that might be the lord's will you may you know go into it and try to witness and preach the gospel to people and things um i don't know i'm i'm too old <laughs> to go to a war you know um unless it would get really bad i guess you know, then, then they might go after 46 year old men but uh, i'm not going to be going in my son's too young my wife they wouldn't want her back in the military <laughs> they're probably glad to get rid of her uh, so, is it wrong to tell people not to go to church? No, it isn't. I highly recommend it. Did you know that Zechariah 13 says two thirds of all the Jews will die in Israel and one third will be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ at the Battle of Armageddon? Um, you know, I haven't studied that portion in a while and things, oops, I haven't studied that portion in a while, but, um, yeah, it's going to be, that's probably the numbers that will be close to that. Um, another good statement there. My grandma always said, it's a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. <laughs> Grandmothers have a lot of wisdom a lot of times there. So um, very good as well. Do you think they'll plan something against us so they, so they hide the rapture as much as they can? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think till the catching up actually happens, the rapture, I think there's going to be very few Christians left at that point in time. Um, they which are alive and remain, you know, the remains there of it. Just a theory. I, you know, it, again, people, you know, oh, Dunlinger doesn't teach imminence anymore. No, I don't. But you know what? Um, if the Lord would say to me, when do you want to go? I would say today. I'd like to go today. But I think that there is more work for us to do before we leave. Um, so, question, can someone deny eternal security and still be saved? Well, which dispensation? You know, which dispensation are we talking about here? 
um, in the future, somebody goes into the, into the time of Jacob's trouble and they take the mark after they profess to be saved. Well, no, they're not saved. Ukraine is full of Orthodox Christians, idol worshipers, uh, no words, judgment. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Um, more of a statement to what you just said. I really enjoyed that video of yours saying all things you will miss. From this world like watching people being saved yeah a lot of people didn't quite get what i was trying to say with that but uh yeah So does anybody else have any questions? If not, I guess we'll close this one down. So, all right. I guess we will um, end this one here, and we will come back two more videos, two more days. Um, been a lot of work. Again, if you could hit the like button, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, appreciate that. So the video gets ranked. You could leave comments as well below the video. Um, whatever. I don't make any money. I'm not monetized, but you know, it just helps the videos to not disappear into uh, whatever you know, non unwatched video YouTube land or something. Um, so. Like I, like I said, tomorrow we will be talking about um, uh, how to fail at off-grid living because I have seen that with people. So that is going to be it. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see everybody tomorrow. And uh, let's keep praying about what's going on in our world. Um, and uh, keep studying the Bible. That's going to be it. See everybody tomorrow.